One of the things I always share with people when we break that down, God does not give wealth. He just gives you the power to access it. Right. And we all have the power to access some level of wealth. Here's the problem. Not all of us have the discipline or the work ethic to activate that particular gift that we may have. And that's important, right, Uh, because um, you can pray all day. And we all know that faith without works is dead. Um, And many people are looking for the gift uh, that they like as opposed to the gift that they are capable of doing, right? Um, I have a a spiritual son, and he keeps applying at schools because he wants to be this coach, right? Uh, But he his skill set is in cooking and baking. He cooks, he bakes, he does an amazing job. People love his food, but for some reason, he tends to believe he's going to build financial security by working where he desires versus working where he's gifted. This is important, right? Uh, because, number one, uh, you will never secure wealth clocking in and clocking out of somebody else's job. Why? Because job stands for just over broke, right? They determine your cap. They tell you, hey, listen, I'm going to borrow you for eight hours, and for those eight hours, I'm only going to pay you $10 an hour. Well, what you're telling them is for the for the eight hours you work for them at $10 an hour, you're only worth $80 that day. That That's what you're telling them. Now, granted, um, If that's what you feel, by all means, there's nothing wrong with that, right? And I think one of the things uh, we have to understand is everybody ain't going to be an entrepreneur. Everybody ain't going to be wealthy. Everybody ain't going to be a millionaire. And we got to stop prophesying all this foolishness. Everybody ain't going to be a millionaire. Some, Y'all, I hate to say it, but somebody got to work at Walmart. Somebody got to work at the gas station. Because if we all millionaires... Who going who gonna to ring us up at the gas station? Who going to ring me up at Walmart, right? So, I, And I, I don't say that to belittle people uh, who work. I say that to say you, your skill set, your gift that God has given you to obtain wealth. Now, wealth does not always include you having a vast amount of finances. That's not what that means, okay? Wealth is more of a mindset and a status and a work ethic. It's not how much money you got in your bank account. Because I know people with hundreds of thousands of dollars in their bank account and they still broke. Because they don't know how to manage. They don't know how to how to invest. They don't know any of that. Okay? Many of us are gifted and the thing that we're gifted in, we're afraid to do because we realize the moment I start doing this, I'm going to have to live it. I was afraid for a long time to talk about finances, right? Because I was in the mindset that I had to have, uh, you know, several thousand dollars in the bank. I needed to be driving what I want to drive. I needed to be living where I want to live before I could start teaching on wealth because I was immature when it comes to this wealth thing, and I was like, God, if I don't have anything flashy for people to look at, they're not going to believe that I can really teach wealth, right? And so God told my wife to do something because uh, we were praying like, God, make us six-figure earners. Um, and God told my wife, go look at your bank statements. And when my, me and my wife began to look over our bank statements, we discovered that we had already brought in six figures, already. Within a year, we had already brought in six figures, but because we had so many responsibilities, we couldn't see it. It's just like those of you who work, and you know you make real good money. You know you work at a good job, you make good money, but then when, after you pay all your bills, the good money that you made, you're like, now wait a minute. <laughs> God, what's going on? Because I know I make good money, and I know I work. But the bills and and different things like that. So understand this. Um, don't look at us. Uh, I'm trying to say this uh, not as millennial as possible. <laughs> uh, don't look at people's material things and think they must be wealthy. Let me tell you something. I know people who can buy Mercedes with an income tax check, but they can't maintain it throughout the year. 
So let's so, so we don't want to look at that. What we want to look at, we want to look at the fruit. What are they producing? We want to look at the consistency. We want to look at are they really utilizing their gifts and their skill sets? And many of you don't even realize the thing you're praying for, you are already in possession of. The gift that you're praying and asking God for, you really already have. You just have to be in the right situation for it to come out. I had no idea how much I comprehended the real estate market until I started taking real estate school. And watch this. Because I was in real estate school now, watch this. There is a gifting for real estate that has now come up out of me because I was put in the right situation to where that gift could be activated. Some of you are frustrated because you're in the wrong place trying to activate the right gift. And you think it's because God don't want you to have it, when in actuality, it's not that he don't want you to have it. He just don't want you to have it here because this place that you're in does not have the capacity, the assignment, nor the anointing to activate that gift, to foster that gift. And so it's, and, and, uh, so without going into all of that, let me say this. The gift to attain wealth. We all have some gift to that aspect because God is not a respecter of persons. The question is, are you able to access that gift? And when you access it, are you able to activate it? For all of us preachers in the room, some of us, maybe a few of us, we don't really like speaking publicly. Like this is, this is anxiety. Like this is nervous because we don't really like Public speaking, standing up in front of people. I, I, I cringe for people who love getting behind the pulpit to preach. I love, I, don't get me wrong, I love it because it's the gift that God has given me, but if He allowed me to choose another gift, I would. Bishop Sean, I hope I'm making sense. So, so I understand that my gift now, my gift now, is a result of my submission to God. And as I continue to submit to God, God begins to put me in situations where gifts that he had in me, I now have to be disciplined enough to activate them and stand on them. Watch this. I'll say this and I close. Many of you don't even understand that you are carrying your own answer. You're praying, God, I I need finances. God, uh, I need you to increase my finances. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And God is literally saying, I've already done that for you. You just have to use what's in your hands. If God has gifted your hands, watch this. If God has gifted your hands, why aren't your hands doing anything? Why would you be someone who can do hair naturally, but because you don't feel like dealing with people, you want to try to go be a school teacher, knowing that you don't even have the patience to be a school teacher, but you're anointed to do hair. And because you think it's insignificant, you won't do it. Not real. And then you'll go to God and say, God, I need you to bless me. I need you to open a door. And God is like, I'm not opening a door when I've given you the answer in your hands. Use what's in your hands. I promise you, I can tell everyone in this room just by talking to them, there's at least one skill set that you are running from that is the answer to what you need. You may not like talking to people, but what if that's where your answer is? You may not like preaching, but what if that's where your answer is? You may not like math, but what if that's where your answer is? Just because you don't like it don't mean he didn't call you to do it. Because sometimes the skill set you have will be unlocked in the thing you don't want to do. Lady Bridget, I yield the mic. Woo, that was good. Thank you so much, Apostle. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us on this morning. Yes, Pastor Terrell had mentioned that yesterday about (laughs) you remember pastor terrell what you were saying about you know about the gifts and how when we don't want to put the discipline in (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like you don't want to stay up at midnight working on projects. You don't want. Yeah, I'm sleepy, God. I'm going to bed at nine. When you know you got off at five from work, you cannot go to sleep, y'all. Y'all have to cook, clean, and then sit down at the computer and learn so you can grow. You can't just say it's going to come to me. Bishop Sean, I'm fussing this morning because I know it's true. Sometimes you have to stay, you know, on the weekends when everybody is going out doing all kind of stuff. You got to stay home. So you can learn. You can grow. What you want to say, Bishop Sean? And then we're going to go to Pastor Ronnie. Yeah, I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching my 15th year of ministry here on the 13th of next month. Um, this is pastoring, not, not ministry. This is 26 years of, of, of ministry, but 15 years of pastoring. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, uh, Bridget, that when I... God gave me the vision to start my church. I literally sit down and had a conversation with God like I'm having a conversation with you all. I said, God, are you kidding me? This means that I got to show up every Sunday now, (laughs) that I can't just get ghosts on some Sundays and not show up. Yolanda, I'm serious. I kid you not. Because you have to sit down and count up the cost. Because a lot of people will start off strong and then somewhere along the journey, they'll be like the foolish Galatians and just end up, you know, quitting or something like that. But you gotta be in this thing for the long haul. And this is why before anybody signed the dotted line to be a member of our church, I took them through this scenario where I asked them four questions. If you decide to, to get married, what factors would go into that? If you decide to, start a business, what factors would go into that? If you started to go to college, what factors would go into that? And and I think it was one more, dream vacation. What factors? And I wanted them to come back with the cost because I wanted them to, to understand that, hey, listen, if you're going to follow me, then I need you to first sit down and count up this cost. And I counted up the cost. I said, God, you mean to tell me I got to have a word every single Sunday? 52 weeks, and then on Wednesday nights, I got to be able to teach Bible study too? Are you kidding me? So, you know, you, you really, really have to think about that. So when you said that, it just it just hit me, um, you, you know, uh, uh, Bridget, because we do people. People literally ask me, and say, Sean, how do you do it? How do you balance ministry? How do you balance your family? How do you balance life? And then you got to prepare and study. My ministers are looking at me, Bishop, how do you do this? We just saw you come back from Atlanta and now you got to preach on Sunday. You got in at two o'clock and you got to preach, you know. They, they don't understand that sometimes, but you, you have to be disciplined in this. You do. Can I, can I add this, Bishop Sean, uh, Lady Bridget, if, if it's okay. Yeah, and then we're going to go to Pastor um, Online. Um, Bishop Sean, what Bishop Sean is saying is so powerful. The average pastor preaches 104 times a year. The average pastor. And that's 52 weeks, two times a week. That doesn't include any additional services. That doesn't include revivals. That doesn't include uh, the times that we are pouring. Uh, that doesn't include uh, the conversations we have with other leaders and other uh, members. That, that doesn't include any of that. That's just preaching, our responsibility of preaching standard basic um, so you have to understand, your pastor is pouring literally every single day from a phone conversation. When, when you're really called to do this, you don't even get to have normal phone conversations often because it usually turns into you encouraging or you uplifting or depending on the assignment, now you're prophesying and you're pouring when you're supposed to be resting. For most pastors, an off day is a gift for us because we don't get to call in sick. We don't get to, you know, and people, I hate to say it, but people don't really, very few, authentically care about the well-being and the mental state of their pastor. The only thing they care about is if I need my leader, I need my leader to be present. But if my leader needs me, my presence is optional.